thing truckers are interested in is how fast their trucks will go and how far their CBs will reach. Well, hello, big riggers. Thanks for joining me, Jim Campbell, as we talk all things trucking. Today, I'm going to talk about a bad accident that occurred on Route 95 in Norwalk, Connecticut, which is expected to keep 95 closed for an extended period of time following a tanker crash and fire involving a tanker truck, a second tractor trailer, and a passenger car. Before we get into it, please remember to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Also, please keep in mind that you can find my channel, Jim Campbell Trucking, on YouTube or in podcast form from your favorite podcast player. This report is about a crash that took place Thursday morning on Route 95 South near Exit 15 in Norwalk, Connecticut, when three vehicles collided under the Fairfield Avenue overpass, causing a huge fire involving a tanker truck that was carrying 8,500 gallons of fuel. State police said a car was merging from the right-hand lane when it struck the tanker truck, which was carrying the 8,500 gallons of fuel. The tanker truck then collided with another tractor trailer in another lane and caught fire. No charges have been filed as of yet. Unbelievably, only minor injuries were reported in the crash that caused major traffic backups during the morning rush hour and will require detours for an extended period of time moving forward. The Fairfield Avenue overpass will need to be removed and that section of Route 95 damaged by the fire will have to be repaved. Needless to say, the repairs are going to take some time. The bridge removal and road repairs could cost upwards of $20 million. Members of the state's congressional delegation sent a letter to the government, federal government, asking the Federal Highway Administration for emergency funds to pay for all these expenses and repairs. Connecticut Governor Ned Lamont has declared a state of emergency, which could expedite the funding. With that being said, Anyone with loads going in or out of the state of Connecticut should be aware of what's going on and their need to go around that Section 95 and plan accordingly. Truckers are urged to avoid that Area 95 and instead use either Route 84 or Route 87 instead. Also, any driver not familiar with Connecticut should keep in mind that big trucks are not allowed to use the Merritt Parkway as an alternative route as that's restricted to big trucks. Text alerts were sent out to residents of Connecticut, New York, and New Jersey to warn them of this incident. Meanwhile, trucking companies were notified to find alternative routes, according to Governor Net Lamont. The fiery accident took out the overpass and also power lines. Utility crews have been working around the clock to replace poles and repair the down power lines. Check out this report. Two cars and a tanker carrying 8,500 gallons of gas colliding on the southbound lane. It ripped open the back of the gasoline went down the road. The crash igniting a fire underneath the Norwalk overpass, consuming the vehicles involved, but leaving no one inside seriously injured. Thank God, uh, no fatalities. Plumes of black smoke could be seen for miles as fire crews began battling the intense flames with foam. We had every engine in the city here. It just took a while to get foam on the fire. The flames severely damaging the bridge, warping its steel. Connecticut Governor Ned Lamont saying crews will be tearing it down overnight. Then they're going to have to take a second look at repaving to make sure that the road is safe and uh, secure. Environmental crews working to clean up the gasoline and foam, saying the runoff did not make it into the city's harbor and air quality tests showing no signs of contamination. Traffic remaining the main hurdle now. Police expecting to reroute traffic for the next several days. The governor hoping reopen I-95 in both directions will happen soon. If all goes well and a monitor to this, uh, we should have a two-way commuting back on I-95 as early as uh, Monday morning. The governor says he has filed an emergency declaration to receive federal funds to pay for that new bridge, which could take a year to rebuild. This tanker accident is eerily similar to the one that took place last June when a gasoline tanker truck crashed getting off of Route 95, which is about 80 miles east of Norwalk, where the tanker crash happened this year. 
Connecticut State Police charged the driver of the car in last year's uh, crash for causing the accident, which killed the tanker driver on the Golden Star Bridge. Reginald Collins, the driver of the car, had stopped his Toyota Avalon in the right-hand lane and failed to use his emergency flashers. Collins was also charged with negligent homicide with a motor vehicle, operating an unregistered motor vehicle, illegal operation of a motor vehicle without minimum insurance, and improper parking. Collins' vehicle registration had been suspended, and the insurance coverage on the vehicle was canceled. So the car was neither registered nor was it insured at the time of the crash. Check this out. Man is now facing charges connected to this fiery crash on the Gold Star Memorial Bridge. That was in Groton last year. A tanker truck driver was killed in that. NBC Connecticut's Jolie Sherman joining us live now from Groton with the very latest. Jolie, what have you learned? Yeah, that fiery crash happened here on April 21st, 2023. A little more than a year later, 59-year-old Reginald Collins turned himself in and was taken into custody. Oh my God, a light pole just went down. This was the scene on the Gold Star Memorial Bridge in Groton about a year ago. A fiery crash involving a tanker truck and a 2006 Toyota Avalon. The actions of stopping in the lane is, is what caused this accident, which was a, a highly dangerous situation. It was 59-year-old Reginald Collins who stopped his car in an active lane on the bridge. According to court documents, Collins got four tires changed and drove his car to test the tires. He also told police the tires he had purchased were used. When he got onto the bridge, he noticed something wrong with the car steering and moved into the right lane. He told police he got out of the car to check the tires and saw one of them was shredded. Court documents reveal dash cam footage from a witness shows Collins' hazard lights were not on as the witness vehicle passed. Collins told police he got back in his car to move into the right shoulder, but that's when a tanker truck carrying home heating oil struck him from behind, rolled over, and went up in flames. Collins turned himself in Wednesday morning. He now faces several charges, including negligent homicide with a motor vehicle. The, the charge of negligent homicide with a motor vehicle is uh, usually used in a circumstance such as this, when one's actions on the roadway uh, due to uh, inattentiveness, carelessness, recklessness is resulting in, in somebody else's death. Sergeant Luke Davis says if you encounter a problem with your car on the highway, pull over to the right shoulder and call 911 immediately. So circumstances like this, they're, they're always tragic events. Uh, our, our condolences go out to the, the family of the, the gentleman that lost his life in this accident, and we hope that the arrest brings them some semblance of closure here. You know, it never ceased to amaze me with regard to some of the stupid things that people do. Unfortunately, some of those stupid things that people do cause injury and death to others. Please remember to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Also, please keep in mind you can find my channel, Jim Campbell Trucking, on YouTube or in podcast form from your favorite podcast player. Thanks a lot. Take care and be well. Bye-bye. I can't hardly wait till I'm a trucker.